Hello? Don't talk, just listen. Unless you want us to detonate the 50 pounds of C4 strapped to your van right now, you're gonna need to bring us one pound of mayonnaise to the corner of 34th and Walnut Street. Come alone, leave it in a paper sack, and make sure it's the kind with... In filmmaking, there is an infinite amount of choices that you can make. There's decisions to make about what camera and lens you use and your lighting and your composition and camera movement and audio and music and costume design and set design. The list goes on and on and that can just be exhausting. A lot of times it can stop you from making anything at all because once you see how daunting the amount of decisions there are to make, sometimes it can feel just like you're not capable and you shouldn't even bother trying. Outside of filmmaking, I feel like it's fairly well discussed, this idea of decision fatigue. The idea is that in our day-to-day -day lives, we're faced with so many different decisions. We have to decide what we're gonna wear and what we're gonna eat and how we're gonna spend our time. And some of those decisions are far more important than other decisions. The most classic example is your wardrobe. If you really value clothing and fashion and, and care about what you wear, of course that's an important decision you should make every day. But if you don't care at all about clothing, you don't care how you dress, then it might be beneficial to just limit your wardrobe to one or two different types of clothing. That's the super common example, but this applies so well to filmmaking. You have to decide which elements are important to you and which are not important to you. Creating anything is so, so incredibly difficult that honestly, anytime I complete a project at all, it feels like an absolute miracle. So one of the best methods that I've found to get past that overwhelming, daunting feeling is just to put as many limitations as possible on the project. It can feel like in order to make something great, you need the biggest box to work within. You need the biggest canvas to paint upon. But in my personal experience, that just leads to either A, not finishing at all because it's too daunting, or B, having it come out more mediocre or more scattered than it would have been if I would have narrowed the focus, had less decisions to make, and really got more creative and more imaginative within a smaller box. I didn't attend film school, but I would imagine that hands down the most beneficial part of film school is just being handed assignments, being given homework where you have a set of constraints, an exact direction to follow, and then being able to just follow that direction and allow your creativity to blossom in that direction. If I'm right about that, that's great news because that means you might not really need film school. You might just need to give yourself clear constraints, clear directions, and then just run with it. So many of mankind's greatest discoveries were made within highly constrained environments. In science, when you're conducting an experiment or you're doing research, it is imperative that you work within a highly controlled environment. And the beauty is, with all of those limitations in place, that's when the scientist or whoever can understand the most about what they're studying and when they can start to make hypotheses about problems that this thing could solve or applications it could be used for or how it could affect the world on a broader scale. But all of that comes as a result of just narrowing down their focus onto one single variable. Now, 
Is this a perfect one-to-one -one comparison to filmmaking? Probably not, but hopefully you get what I'm getting at. Especially if you're just trying to learn and practice filmmaking, it can be so beneficial to just focus on one single variable. Just focus on composition or lighting or sound. And the more you learn, the more experience you get, those won't really become variables anymore. You'll kind of figure out the compositions you like and the sound that you like. And then you can focus on other variables. You can focus on conveying a feeling, or you can just move on to, to broadening the scope of your project a little more. And so before I move on to the next point, let's first talk about music. This whole conversation we're having is centered around removing any obstacles that can hinder or, or cease your creativity. The last thing you would want is to, to lose inspiration or get frustrated because you can't find the music that matches the feeling you're trying to create. And you will not have that problem with music bit. Music is such a central pillar for all artwork and with video and film especially, music has the power to absolutely make or break a film. I've been using Musicbed for years now and it's so reassuring to be able to go into a project with full confidence, knowing that I'll be able to find music that matches or, or more often elevates the feeling that I'm trying to create. They have the largest curated collection of music that's organized intentionally for filmmakers. So it's easy to find what you need and it's truly great music <laughs> that you'll actually want to listen to. For a limited time, they're currently offering a free 14-day trial so that you can use the music in your projects and see the difference for yourself. I'll leave the link for that free trial in the description and I highly recommend that you take advantage of it. There's this fairly well-known quote by Jim Carrey that says, I wish that everyone could be rich and famous so that they could realize it's not the answer. I would love to change that quote to, I wish every filmmaker could have all of the gear and cameras that they ever dreamed of so they could realize it's not the answer. I'll keep this brief for a couple reasons, because one, I know that this topic is just beaten to death, and two, I know how obnoxious it is to hear from a YouTuber that has so much nice gear talk about gear not mattering. Trust me, I, I fully understand that, but gear is just another limitation like all of these things we've been talking about the rest of this video. There's absolutely nothing wrong with wishing you had better gear and, and dreaming and aspiring to acquiring better gear, but please do not let that stop you from making something. Accept the fact that your gear is just one of many limitations in place to free you up to create something. Gear is just yet another piece of the box you're working within so that your imagination can run wild with that tool. Some people know this innately and some people just need to hear this every single day, but you are what makes the thing special. Your camera, your gear is not gonna make it special. It's you and your creativity and your imagination and the stories that you've lived that will make your project special. So if you have any additional thoughts or perspectives on this, I would love to hear about those in the comments. It's always, always helpful to hear another perspective, but thanks as always so much for being here and I'll see you soon. Makes me want more.